Hello, movie aficionados. Today, we embark on a cinematic journey through the illustrious career of the incredibly talented Cuba Gooding Jr. Join us as we explore the highs, the challenges, and the enduring brilliance of this Academy Award-winning actor. Born on January 2, 1968, in the Bronx, New York, Cuba Gooding Jr. was destined for greatness. Growing up in a family deeply rooted in the performing arts, his early exposure to the stage ignited a passion for acting that would shape his future. Cuba Gooding Jr. burst onto the Hollywood scene with his breakthrough role as Trey Styles in John Singleton's Boys in the Hood, 1991. His raw talent and emotional depth immediately captured audiences, setting the stage for a remarkable career. Cuba Gooding Jr.'s career reached new heights with his unforgettable portrayal of Rod Tidwell in Jerry Maguire, 1996. The role earned him an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, a moment etched in Oscar history with his joyous acceptance speech. Cuba Gooding Jr. is a man who would become synonymous with films such as Boys in the Hood, 1991, Pearl Harbor, 2001, and most recently for his role in the limited television series, The People v. O.G. Simpson, American Crime Story. With his career spanning the late 80s to the modern day, Gooding Jr. has earned many accolades, though not without attracting some less than stellar jobs and becoming embroiled in controversy. Here we are going to look back on Cuba Gooding Jr.'s career with a focus on his humble beginnings, his breakthrough roles, and his a segment on where he finds himself today. Cuba Gooding Jr. had a taste of what fame could do to a man as his father, Cuba Gooding Sr., was a member of the soul band The Main Ingredient. After his father left the family, Gooding Jr. was raised by his mother alongside his siblings and would grow to have his first taste of fame for himself when he became a breakdancer for Lionel Richie during the 1984 Summer Olympics. After this, Gooding Jr. would begin to turn to acting earning some guest star appearances on television shows such as Hill Street Blues and Ammon, and having reoccurring guest appearances in MacAver as Billy Coulter. After making some minor appearances in films, Gooding Jr. would earn his first significant starring role in the early 90s. Starring as Jason Tri Styles II in Boys in the Hood, Gooding Jr. would get to work alongside stars such as Ice Cube, Lawrence Fishburne, and Angela Bassett. After gaining a high level of experience and exposure, new doors would open for Gooding Jr., with the young man taking on many strong supporting roles. He would perform as a Broman Lincoln Haynes in Gladiator, 1992, Corporal Carl Edward Hamaker in A Few Good Men, 1992, and Major Salt in Outbreak, 1994, among others. Gooding Jr. became known for his work as a supporting actor after his performance as Rod Tidwell, a disgruntled Arizona Cardinals football player, in Jerry Maguire, 1996, a role that would earn Cuba Gooding Jr. his first major award in the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. While this accomplishment would fill Gooding Jr. with confidence, it wouldn't mean every step of his career would be a successful one. The first few years after receiving the award would be bountiful, with Cuba Gooding Jr. getting prominent roles in films such as Men of Honor, 2000, Pearl Harbor, 2001, and being featured in As Good As It Gets, 1997, a film that would win multiple awards. Cuba Gooding Jr. would also receive his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in early 2001. However, as the hype surrounding Gooding Jr. began to die down, he would find himself taking on smaller projects, many of which would end up being direct-to-DVD films. One commercial success would be his leading role in the movie Snow Dogs, 2002, a Disney Channel film. It would be over 10 years before Gooding Jr. would find himself thrust back into the spotlight. His most impressive roles during that interim were when he played Nicky Barnes in Ridley Scott's American Gangster, 2007, and Ben Carson in Gifted Hands, The Ben Carson Story, 2009. Seeing his film career start to dwindle into obscurity, Cuba Gooding Jr. would look to revitalize his career by taking on different projects. 
he would enter the realm of voice acting and animation by taking on the role of Buck, the domestic chorus in Home on the Range, 2004. He would also perform some live-action work in the video game Quest for the Code, 2002. Following this, Gooding Jr. would take some time to turn to the stage by performing in theatrical plays with roles such as Little Watts in The Trip to Bountiful and Billy Flynn in Chicago, a show he would perform in both London Seeing his film as well as start to dwindle into obscurity. Cuba Gooding Jr. would look to revitalize his career by taking on different projects. He would enter the realm of voice acting and animation by taking on the role of Buck, the domestic chorus in Home on the Range, 2004. He would also perform some live-action work in the video game Quest for the Code, 2002. Following this, Gooding Jr. would take some time to turn to the stage by performing in theatrical plays with roles such as Little Watts in The Trip, to Bountiful and Billy Flynn in Chicago, a show he would perform in both London as well as New York City. Gooding Jr. wouldn't stray too far from film, as he would perform admirably as Carter Wilson in The Butler, 2013, and as Fred Gray in Selma, 2014, before turning his attention back to television. Gooding Jr. would take on the lead role of O.G. Simpson in The People v. O.G. Simpson, American Crime Story, a limited series that would earn Gooding Jr. an Emmy Award. Gooding Jr. would then make an attempt at directing, with his directorial debut coming with Bayou Caviar, 2018, a film he would also star in. This feat would be lost amidst controversy, as Gooding Jr., would become one of many Hollywood stars that would be called out for alleged sexual misconduct. With around 30 accusations made and three formal charges, Gooding Jr. is looking to continue his career, having wrapped filming alongside Terrence Howard on a yet-to-be-released film called Skeletons in the Closet. Two women have filed lawsuits alleging the Freedom Actor groped them in New York City in separate incidents in 2018 and 2019. The lawsuits were filed Wednesday in New York Supreme Court under the state's Adult Survivors Act, which gives plaintiffs a temporary window to submit civil claims of sexual offenses that would otherwise not meet the statute of limitations. The Adult Survivors Act expires this week. The legal action is only the most recent for Gooding. In June, he reached a last-minute settlement with a woman who accused him of raping her a decade ago, avoiding a trial. In the 2018 lawsuit, obtained by the Times, a woman said that while she was working as a cocktail waitress at LAVO restaurant and nightclub in New York, Gooding forced his tongue into her mouth without her consent. Gooding pleaded guilty to a criminal forcible touching charge related to the incident in April last year. The lawsuit filed Wednesday includes a portion of the transcript of Gooding's testimony from that litigation in which the judge asks him to describe what he did. I kissed the waitress on her lips, he said, before confirming that he'd done it without her permission. In the 2019 filing, Kelsey Harbert said that she approached Gooding at Magic Hour Rooftop Bar and Lounge, hoping to meet the actor. She alleged that after she sat next to Gooding's girlfriend, the actor reached over and felt her thigh and breast. So you can imagine my surprise when I saw a flash of movement and felt his hand on my breast, groping it, feeling around on it, as if I was a piece of meat, Harbert is quoted saying in the lawsuit. Harbert filed a police report within a week of the incident. Gooding pleaded guilty again, and the civil lawsuit includes Gooding confirming that it was non-consensual physical contact at his hearing. Both women are seeking unspecified damages for assault and battery, lost wages, emotional, mental and physical injury, and attorney's fees. A representative for Gooding did not immediately respond to the Times' request for comment. Gloria Allred, who is representing the two plaintiffs, said in a statement, per deadline, our clients were deprived of the justice they sought in the criminal case. They are now seeking justice and accountability in their civil cases. We are proud of their courage and intend to vigorously fight for them until they win the justice that they deserve. Like any artist, Cuba Gooding Jr. faced career challenges. Yet, true to his resilient spirit, he has navigated through setbacks and embraced comebacks, showcasing an unwavering commitment to his craft. 
Beyond the silver screen, Cuba Gooding Jr. has used his platform for positive change. His advocacy work and charitable contributions reflect a commitment to making a lasting impact, both within and beyond the world of entertainment. As we celebrate Cuba Gooding Jr.'s artistic odyssey, it's clear that his legacy continues to evolve. With a career marked by acclaim, versatility, and a dedication to storytelling, Gooding remains an influential force in Hollywood. As we conclude our cinematic exploration of Cuba Gooding Jr.'s extraordinary journey, we salute an actor whose performances have left an indelible mark on our hearts and the silver screen. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, may your cinematic adventures be as captivating as those of Cuba Gooding Jr.